barrage of a battleship's guns, United States forces move in to drive the Japanese from rocky, fog-bound Attu, strategic island in the Aleutian chain. Troops waiting for the zero hour. Time to go over the side. Invasion boats, filled with men and guns, determined to wrest the island from the enemy. For Attu lies but 750 miles from the great Japanese naval base at Paramushiri. The problem of supplying an expedition to take this vital subarctic outpost is tremendous. But the Americans are well trained for landing such as this, and they're bringing everything they'll need to hold Attu against any future attack. Wrecked Jap planes litter the beach as American aircraft keep constant patrol. An important victory for United States forces in the Pacific. An allied convoy plowing through the stormy, windswept North Atlantic. A rough passage that has Liberty ships and patrol boats wallowing in the heavy sea. With the turbulent ocean now calm as a mill pond, the convoy steams at top speed. For despite Hitler's threats of submarine attack, the convoys are going through. Suddenly, well in advance of the cargo ships, a spotter sights an undersea raider. Depth charges fly out over the ocean. Second volley of high explosives. And there's the Nazi submarine forced to the surface. Shattered by depth bombs, the stricken raider is abandoned. One of dozens that are meeting the same fate. The Allies are sinking them faster than the Nazis can build them. Tunis, capital of Tunisia. Last great milestone in the Allied liberation of North Africa. Virtually undamaged, the city of one quarter million falls to the British after a lightning swift assault that forced the Nazis to surrender. Hastily prepared defenses, such as trenches cut in this Tunis Park, were never used. Advance units of the British enter the city. The three year struggle for the African continent is over. Only small groups of enemy snipers remain. Nest after nest is wiped out or forced to surrender. Apparently, many of them surrendered gladly. Everywhere in the streets of Tunis are companies of captured men marching to internment, eventually to prison camps in Canada and the United States.
last enemy stronghold is a half-finished block of apartments. But here, as elsewhere, the Nazis find further resistance futile. For French troops bringing in long lines of Nazi prisoners, there is understandable satisfaction. The tide has turned. The liberation of Frenchmen has begun. Italy's Marshal Giovanni Messi, one of the Axis commanders-in-chief, is taken. Mussolini made Messi a field marshal after his utter defeat in Tunisia. Von Arnhem is flown by transport from Gibraltar to England. The great Nazi Colonel General Dietloff Jürgen von Arnhem, commander of all Axis forces in North Africa. The general who told Hitler he had defended Tunisia to the last cartridge is now in a prison camp. Accorded every courtesy befitting his rank, von Arnhem is the richest prize of the battle for Africa. Triumphal entry of the United Nations forces into Tunis. Men of the gallant British 1st and 8th armies are welcomed with open arms. Citizens of Tunis, nearly a quarter of them Italian by birth, leave little doubt as to where their sympathies lie in the conflict. Stars and Stripes, the Cross of Lorraine, and the Union Jack replaced the swastika over Tunis. French troops who fought so gallantly beside their British and American allies proudly pass in review before General Giraud. This is a day that will go down in history. Her fighting men are again on the march. A day of hope for the enslaved of Europe. Mm -hmm. 